So we're going to just touch briefly on coordinated versus uncoordinated flight. What are we talking about? Um, adverse yaw, P factor, and parasitic drag. So we talked yesterday about the different control surfaces of an airplane. And so just to highlight, I think this figure uh, uses color to make it a little bit clearer where all those control surfaces are. So on the wing, on the outer parts of the wing, in green, you see the ailerons. And those ailerons are what we discussed in terms of doing the roll, roll motion of the airplane. We have the flaps in purple. Those are closer in. When we talk about extending the flaps, we talk about lowering the flaps. And that was what we were discussing on the whiteboard with um, increasing the lift, but also the drag when we lower the flaps. And then back at the tail, there are a lot of different components we discussed. So on the vertical part, or the vertical stabilizer at the back, we have the rudder shown in red. And then the horizontal stabilizer has the elevator shown in blue. So just as a, as a reminder, I think this could be helpful. All these slides will be added uh, for your access. Let's also talk about what happens. So when you're, when you're doing a coordinated turn, we talked about how that means that the ailerons, which control the roll motion, and the rudder that controls the yaw motion, are both coordinated. So both of them are causing a similar motion. So a, a left roll for your aileron. The aileron you control with the yoke, so it's just a steering wheel, so you turn it left. Um, and the rudders you control with your feet. So you want to use your feet and your hands to simultaneously cause a left yaw, left roll. So when you're coordinating, those are going in conjunction. When it's not coordinated, Philip discussed the um, this slip skid indicator that shows uh, the turn coordinator. And we discussed this ball that rolls around on the bottom as a very quick way of knowing whether your turn is coordinated. And um, as you can see on the figure on the right, the ball is not in the middle. The ball is on the right. And so the, the way to remember it is you step on the ball. So that means you need to apply a little bit more right rudder in order to make sure your turn is coordinated. This is a little bit more detail. We won't read it out today, but in case you have more questions on that, I have the FAA link there talking about coordinated flight. And this will be relevant as we talk about uncoordinated flight is really uh, Unless it's done intentionally, um, it could lead to stalls and other issues. We talked a lot about different things that cause yaw on the aircraft. Um, I think we had some questions yesterday about yaw, so I wanted to point out, you know, there are a lot of different things that, that result in that yaw motion. So there's adverse yaw created by the aileron deflection. There's also all of the other um, kind of left turn tendencies that we went through, such as P factor. And I've just put some materials up here for you to reference, you know, just a reminder about why that adverse yaw um, takes place as you turn, uh, for example, when you're trying to roll to the left, why the aileron is causing a, a lift on one side and drag on the other that's causing that adverse yaw. And then also on P factor, this is the slide that we discussed on P-factor, so I've added in a little bit more material that uh, Professor Hansman and I discussed about P-factor, different ways to understand it and explain it. Um, our, our really intuitive explanation was just that um, you know, the blade that's, that's going down is actually uh, when the airplane is, is tilted up, because that's when you see that P-factor with the climbing, for example, the blade that's going down is really going into the wind, and so it's generating more thrust. And the blade that's ascending on the left, the left blade coming up is kind of going away from the wind, um, and so it's generating less thrust. But here's a more detailed description to kind of break it down for you why that center of thrust is moving to the right. 
Um, and there were a couple questions on drag, so I just wanted to come back and talk about drag and clarify a couple things to make sure we were saying what we meant to say. And so um, the, the parasitic drag is the one that is the, the green line. So it's actually increasing with the airspeed. And um, I was asked for an intuitive explanation as to why that happens. So one way to think about it, yes. Tina's mic's, while Tina's mic is being adjusted, I'll just point out that uh, don't stress out too much about coordination. You don't have to get it right if you're going reasonably fast. Uh, you know, the airplane isn't going to stall. It's just slightly bad style to go sideways uh, through the air, but you can, uh, you can kind of do it all day. And a lot of people never touch the rudders until it's uh, time to land in a crosswind, and even then they don't touch them, <laughs> which... Uh, can have some slightly uh, ugly uh, results, but uh, there's there's a lot of forgive forgivingness uh, built into these designs. I agree. When you're actually flying the plane, the instructor will try to make sure you're seated in the plane properly. Um, for those of us that are a little bit shorter than people like Philip, you want to really make sure your, your chair is pulled forward in the seat. And the reason is that you want your, your feet, you want the heels of your feet to be resting on the ground and you want the toes of your feet to actually be touching the rudder. That way you can feel the rudder and you can notice intuitively if it starts really moving, you can even it out. Um, and it's really, it's really important that your feet can appropriately reach the rudder and that, and once they're doing that, once they're kind of resting there, just like Philip is saying it becomes second nature to make sure that your flight is coordinated. Um, so just adding here on the parasitic drag, um, so just explaining, we were just talking about, you know, there are different types of drag. They're not really, it's not a clear linear relationship. There are a lot of things that affect it, but there was a question about how does parasitic drag um, get affected by airspeed. So one intuitive way to think about it is that at a higher airspeed, more air molecules are coming and hitting that uh, wing, and so you have more <coughs> molecules that kind of rub against uh, the air surface and create that, and so you have skin friction, form drag, interference drag. Um, it gets very detailed and complicated, but just for the, an intuitive way of thinking about it, um, you're gonna have more parasitic drag when you're at a higher airspeed. <laughs> 